It is the summer of 1916 in New York City, and an epidemic is peaking. Children are the worst hit, becoming permanently paralyzed, or even dying. The authorities impose closure of pools, amusement parks, any place where kids gather. Do you know which disease we are talking about? And more importantly, how we got rid of it? The first documented outbreak of polio occurred in 1894 in Vermont. A local doctor, Charles Cavalli, realized that children's nervous system was affected, but nobody knew why. Eleven years and many outbreaks later, researcher Ivar Wickman suggested that it could be an infectious disease. That's why Erwin Popper and Karl Landsteiner extracted fluid from a patient's spinal cord, filtered it, and inoculated monkeys. As the monkeys fell ill, the experiment demonstrated Wickman's theory. And because the filter retained bacterial cells, something smaller, like a virus, must have been responsible. Years later, Simon Flexner discovered antibodies in the blood of monkeys that survived, indicating that a vaccine against polio was feasible. But the road to the vaccine wasn't an easy one. Researchers managed to grow the virus and prepare a vaccine with attenuated virus and another with dead ones, which they tested on 20,000 children. Many died or ended up paralyzed, and this tragic outcome stopped the research for many years. Mistrust of vaccines was broken in 1955, when 50,000 polio cases were reported in the US. Researcher Jonas Salk had implemented a new, safer method to grow and inactivate the virus, and he wanted to start clinical trials with his vaccine. He managed to run a small trial, but to build trust, Salk injected himself, his wife, and his three kids with the vaccine. This bold move paved the way for a vast trial with the participation of over 1.3 million children, which resulted in a success. The polio expert Albert Sabin developed attenuated strains for an oral live vaccine and also succeeded in a large clinical trial. Many massive vaccination campaigns later, the virus is almost eradicated and only a few reservoirs remain active in Middle East countries. In the rest of the world, kids can play freely again in those hot summer days without fearing this paralyzing virus.